How is machine learning currently being used in the sports world? I mean, is it early days or is it a mature space right now? Well, it's definitely in its early days. Uh, sort of, we're starting to get data sets where machine is really not only important but vital. Uh, but it's already being used quite heavily. So, I mean, I know that professional NBA teams are using results of machine learnings to uh, machine learning to change their strategies in playoff games and playoff series. So, it's really, uh, you know great to see that uh, machine learning can have such an impact so quickly. What does machine learning allow now that wasn't possible before? So, you know, one of the things, there's a lot of things, parts of the game of the basketball, the pick and rolls, dribble handoffs, um, that coaches really care about, about analyzing how it works on offense, how to guard them. And before big data and machine learning, basically people watch the games and mark them. Mm. And so it turns out that people are pretty bad at marking them accurately, and they also miss a ton of stuff. So right now, machine learning basically tells coaches, this is how many pick and rolls these two players uh, have had over the course of the season, how often they do all the different variations, what they're good at, what they're bad at. So coaches can really find tendencies that can help them sort of play offense, play defense far more efficiently based off of machine learning. And the data set is far bigger and far more accurate than the way they used to do it, which is basically people watching it and saying this is what happened. Has the work that your company has done changed the way that you personally watch games? You know, completely. Is I think that I can't. For yeah. you now? <laughs> no, it's it's so much <laughs> richer it, now. It uh, yeah. It's so much richer. So, you know, you know, we're involved in the science of moving dots, and we have a lot of data visualizations that help us see the game the way the computer sees the game. So, there's all these sort of trails of moving dots and dynamic slices of the courts and matchup lines. And now, when I watch the game. I see all those lines and all those numbers floating around. But the cool thing is we've started to work with broadcasters, national broadcasters uh, like ESPN and Fox, and we've created data visualizations that actually augment those things on, on video, and now they're actually used in the last year's playoffs. And so the thing that was in our heads is now actually on TV, and fans get to see that view uh, as well. So it's really exciting. Are there times where you're watching the game and you wish that some of those visualizations were available to oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I think it's going to come. I think within a couple of years, uh, fans are going to get access to those visualizations, um, and it's going to change the way we see the game. It seems like it's become fairly seamless, too. And the example I have is uh, my, my local baseball team, they've always got the strike zone up, and, yep. and I can see it. Yep. And then if I'm watching a national, national broadcast, it won't be there. I'm like, We're, I, know. I, I need that. I mean, I'm it's, used to that. Exactly. It, I think like, it adds to the experience, and once you have it, you can't go back. And so we've seen a couple of those things, and we can't go back. And I think once everybody sees these things, they won't be able to go back either. Do you have a favorite stat? So I do. Uh, it's one of the ones we recently came up with. One of the things we were able to do is in basketball, you know, you can always count how well you shot. I made 7 out of 12 shots. I made 8 out of 9. I made 1 out of 7. That's, that's me. Um, I gave myself <laughs> 1. Um, but the, the thing is that you never counted how difficult the shot was. So in reality, you know that there are players who take tough shots but are really good shooters and others who are basically take really easy shots but not are, aren't that great a shooter. So we have a couple of metrics, one that tells you how hard your shots are and one, what your shooting ability is. And I really like the shooting ability one because it sort of, it, it can help you find sort of secretly good players. It's like, oh, I always knew that guy was talented because, mm -hmm. and the fact that they were talented were hidden by the fact that they were taking hard shots, either because they were forced to or because perhaps their judgment wasn't the best. But I think that the fact that we can sort of separate things that were confounded like shot quality and shooting ability into into shooting, we can separate that again and sort of give you all kinds of new insights. Uh, and so for me, I, lo I love looking at that. Now that's not publicly available yet, but it will be soon. Is shot quality in that case determined just by placement on the floor or so, does defense factor in? So defense well? is a big deal. So I think, you know, I think what we're doing is match, having the machine match human in intuition. So if I'm watching a game, I know that, you know, the shot is harder, you know, if I'm further away, if I have multiple defenders, if they're close, if they're closing in on me, if I'm dribbling, you know, the type of shot I'm taking. So as a human, I watch this and I have an intuition about it. But now by giving all that, uh, that, that data to the machine, it can make a predictor that actually matches our intuition and goes beyond it because it can actually put a number onto what our intuition tells us. And so as you see these numbers floating around, the nice thing is it's like, it matches your intuition. I know that as the defender comes in and out or as the player starts dribbling, like it gets harder or easier, and, and it's really cool to watch that. Has that type of analysis led to things like uh, sort of the uptick we've seen in corner threes in basketball? So I think that um, what 
the the uptick in corner threes has already come because people just realize like, hey, that's a really valuable shot, and sure. it's closer than the other threes. And so it sort of <laughs> it makes a lot of sense to take that. I think the kind of analysis we're doing is that, for example, we can tell you that not every corner three is the same. There are really easy corner threes, which are you're standing there, it's a catch and shoot, no one's near you, or you're dribbling and you step back and you uh, launched a corner three, and we should not treat those two the same. So our ability basically to find shot quality and shooting ability lets a team find perhaps a hidden a hidden three corner three point shooter who was really talented but was taking tough shots and so their ability was hidden hmm. so we give teams the ability to find sort of secretly good players what is your least favorite stat uh, this is coming <laughs> I, I, so i would say that every, every stat had their place and there was a reason they were invented but i think as time goes by you know better better stats come along and perhaps some stats should perhaps retire. Uh, I mean, I think the obvious one, and I think I agree with it, is, is wins in baseball. I think that when I looked into the history of it, there was a reason that it came about because it was, you want to attribute the, the player's performance to more than just their individual performance, but to team performance. And so the goal was, was reasonable, but I think we have much better ways of measuring that now, and I think sort of adding that to the conversation can confound things. So there are things like, especially in baseball, things like wins and RBIs mm-hmm. that that we can add more context to. And I think that's really what data is allowing us to do, is before we had the ability to have context, the box score, that's, we had to go with that because that's what the box score allowed us to do. But with all this tracking data, we can just add a lot more context. You don't just have to look at shots made or shots missed. You can look at all this data about the context of a shot. Same thing with, uh, with baseball. You, know, you can take all the data they have right now, add a lot of context, and you can really figure out who's contributing to a win more or less other than the, the classical definition. Right. So, Is there a stat or an insight that you want to have that isn't there yet? Something like, I guess, real-time in-game analytics, something along those lines? So I think real-time in, in-game analytics is both a reality and it's going to more, get more and more spread over the next couple of years. So I'm, I'm excited about just making that happen and mm-hmm. being part of that process. Um, and so I think it's going to be transformational. I think we've already seen that the way... Coaches who've been in the league for 30 years before there was even video are, you know, being influenced by machine learned data. We're seeing how broadcasters are talking about shot probabilities uh, on national TV. So things are changing um, a lot. For me personally, the thing that I think I love the data. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy sort of working with it over the next several years and seeing all the great things that come out. Um, what's a little bit out of reach, I would love to know the mental states of all the players and how those are evolving. I think that is not so yeah. easy to get accurately. Uh, and I don't know if and how we'll get there. But for me, that's something I always wonder about that, that I don't... I think it is a bit out of reach at the current time, but I think there's so much to be gotten out of the movement data. We are not even... We're sort of a, a sliver on the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're right. going to be able to do. And it's going to be really exciting to see what's going to come out of it over the next... You know, decade or so. That's really interesting because yeah. you see so much of people trying to process body language and things like that. Yeah. Especially if you actually could have some insight yep. into it. Um, last, question, last question for you. You mentioned the science of moving dots yep. before. How do you see that expanding beyond sports? Well, I mean, I think that it's a fundamental thing. In fact, before we got into sports, uh, you know, uh, my colleague Yuhan Chang and I were faculty at USC, and our research group was all about moving dots. And we studied you know, social media, geo, uh, geo tracks social media. We tracked uh, vehicles, people, mobile games. There's a lot of data coming out, and with with sensors getting cheaper, there are factories and hospitals and devices and people being tracked, um, homes being you know uh, being tracked. And I think there's a, a big emergence of movement data. And I think that what we found was that there was no science of moving dots. And if there was, it would transform everything, cities, homes, um, how we interact with each other, how we operate our businesses. Uh, we just found that sports had to happen to have really great data, and that was a great place to build this science. But I think that what comes out of sports, the, the methodologies, the techniques, uh, are going to affect all aspects of our life because we're, you know, we're moving everywhere, and we're tracking that movement now for the first time at scale. And so we'll be able to understand lots of aspects of our life that we were never able to understand before, and it's going to be transformational. Great. Thank you for being with us. Oh, it was a pleasure.